T minus 15 seconds. Falcon 9 configured for flight. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. Lift off. Go Falcon. Go GPS. Vehicle is pitching downrange. Stage one propulsion is nominal. Thirty seconds into flight, propulsion says the Merlin 1B engines are nominal. We're on trajectory and preparing to throttle down in preparation for maximum dynamic pressure. And we're heading into the throttle bucket as we power down the Merlin engines. And throttling back up now. And when the engine's back up at full power, we now for max Q call out. The vehicle is experiencing maximum aerodynamic pressure. Engine chill is started. Now coming up in just over 30 seconds, main engine cutoff, stage separation, and then we'll get startup of the second stage engine. Stage separation confirmed. And back startup. So we've had a good separation. MVAC up on power. Trajectory continues to look right down the middle. Both stages are following nominal trajectory. Next event coming up is payload fairing separation. Fairing separation. A nice view from the camera looking forward. The GPS-3 satellite with the two payload fairing halves separating. First stage continuing to coast to apogee, headed downrange. Second stage engine at full power. Everything's looking good with the MVAC engine. Right now trajectory heading us to where the Bermuda ground station. Can hear us, we've heard the call out, acquisition of signal. Bermuda now getting the telemetry from the Falcon 9 second stage. Both stages continue to follow nominal trajectories. And we just passed T plus four minutes and 23 seconds, and that's actually when the first stage reaches apogee of 120 kilometers, almost 400,000 feet. At stage separation, the first stage velocity is about 2,200 meters per second or five. Nominal parking orbit. And Seco. There we've had Seco. There's good orbit. Now the next, next major milestone that you'll be able to see you'll be able to see on your screen is the first stage's entry burn. Both stages continue to follow nominal trajectories. For the entry burn, we relight the center E9 engine, and then partway through, we relight the E1 and E5 engines so that we have a total of three M1D L engines. Stage one entry burn startup. And there's that entry burn starting up. Stage FTS is saved, stage one. You could see the plume started off small and it got a little larger, and that is because we started with one single engine and added a couple engines for a total of three for this entry burn. Stage one entry burn shut down. And that concludes the entry burn. Then about 25 awesome. seconds. Okay, stage one expected. Hopefully have a nice view of the first stage touching down on, of course, I still love you. And there's that drone ship on your left-hand screen. Stage two has entered terminal guidance. Stage one transonic. Stage one transonic. Just about 20 seconds away from those two events. Again, the landing burn. Stage two FTS has saved. Stage one landing burn. And as you may recall, about a month ago, we stood down from Falcon 9's launch attempt of this mission due to an auto abort during engine ignition caused by early start behavior on two engines. This was a good abort by Falcon 9. The rocket did exactly as it was programmed to do when the, in when the data indicates something doesn't look as we expected to right before liftoff. Stage one landing leg deploy. 
We sent those two engines to Texas for further testing and it turned out that there was a blockage in a vent passage that leads to a relief valve on the gas generator. The blockage was caused by a masking lacquer residue that had hardened during the build process, but once we removed it, the gas generator was restored to normal behavior during subsequent testing. Nominal parking orbit. There's good orbit, and at the same time, we have touchdown of our Falcon 9 <laughs> on Of Course I Still Love You. And again, that did... So we'll see you back here at T plus one hour in two minutes. Welcome back to the webcast of the Falcon 9 mission carrying GPS-3 Space Vehicle 4 for the U.S. Space Force. To recap what's happened so far this evening, we had a smooth on-time liftoff at 6.24 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. In back ignition. We've got ignition of the second stage engine. We're up on power. Now, but this burn is going to bring us all the way up into the transfer orbit, and then shortly after that, we'll separate the GPS satellite. Now we're coming up on shutdown number two called SECO2, and this is the burn that will place GPS-3 space vehicle into the required orbit. MVAC shutdown. We've got SECO. We'll be back with you at T plus one hour, 28 minutes, and 30 seconds. Welcome back to our launch coverage of the GPS-3 Space Vehicle 4 mission for the U.S. Space Force. We've got a nice live view of that GPS-3 satellite. It will deploy confirmed. And there confirms the deployment of the GPS-3 satellite as it's drifting away from Falcon 9. This confirms a successful spacecraft separation, and that completes our primary mission, which will bring today's webcast coverage to a close. Drifting slowly away from the Falcon 9 second stage, and it's a great way to bring a webcast to an end. We'd like to thank the U.S. Space Force for entrusting us with today's GPS-3 Space Vehicle 4 mission. Now we look forward to the additional GPS missions we will be supporting in the future. Special thanks this evening to the 45th Space Wing for range support. Thanks for joining us, and have a good week.